your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go. Hey. Yeah. One more time. Put your hands up. Hey. Are you ready?
Put your hands together. Hey. Our God is worthy to be praised. Are you ready? One more time. Yeah, we pray.
Hallelujah. Somebody go ahead and just bless the name of the Lord. Just go ahead and give him praise. Just lift, lift up his name wherever you are joining from, whatever nation you are, or whatever platform you are joining us in this service. Just go ahead and bless the name of the Lord. You want to celebrate his faithfulness. You want to celebrate his awesome kindness. You want to celebrate his goodness over your life, over your family. The psalmist said in Psalm 103, he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You want to let God know that you do not forget all his benefits. You are taking his benefits to heart. You are not taking him for granted. You want to appreciate God because he's a miracle working God. He's your provider. He's your protector. He's your preserver. He's the one that has honored you. He's the one that has lifted up your head. He's one that has provided for you. He has, he's one that has made way for you. He's one that says, I am that I am. The one who has been there with you since the year began, even till now. This is the last Sunday of the sixth month and you want to bless God. You want to bless him for January. You want to bless him for February. You want to bless him for March, for April, for May. And now we are seeing the end of the month of June. You want to shout a big hallelujah wherever you are joining from. You want to say, Lord, I am so, so grateful. Indeed, you have been wonderful. You have been kind. You have been merciful. Awesome God, I bless you. I give you praise. You are faithful. Faithful Father. Faithful Father. I celebrate your faithfulness. I celebrate your hand in my family. I celebrate your hand in my business. I celebrate your hand in my health. I celebrate your hand in my finances. I celebrate your hand on my career. I celebrate your hand upon all that you have committed to my hands. And I give you praise. I give you praise. The psalmist said, if it has not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, it says it has not been Lord who was on our side. He said we will have been swallowed up because God has been on your side. You have not been swallowed up. The circumstances around you have not swallowed you up. The situations around you have not swallowed you up. God is keeping your head higher. He has kept you higher. He has kept you upon the waters. You are walking upon the waters because he is with you. Because his presence is with you. you want to bless him some more this morning. This moment you want to bless him some more. Lord, we say thank you. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name. All right, so we want to pray this wonderful this, this service. We want to first of all pray for uh, the Accelerate Conference. The conference is coming up uh, um, from June 30th to 3rd July. And the theme of Accelerate Conference is Waymaker. And I want us to pray this, this moment and ask that God will grant every minister that is in the lineup that they will speak and minister as God's oracles in the mighty name of Jesus. Very important. We have a wonderful lineup of ministers, but we don't just want them to call. We don't want them to come as oracles of God. First Peter chapter 4, verse 11. It says, If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Can I ask that you go ahead and lift up your voice wherever you are and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for everyone that will be ministering during Accelerate Conference, we ask that you will minister as your oracle in the name of Jesus. You will put your words in their mouths in the name of Jesus, the word and season in the name of Jesus, the right song, the right worship song, the right, the right moves will come from them in the name of Jesus. No one will minister in the flesh, in the mind name of Jesus, that the spirit of the living God will engulf everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. They will come to minister to us to God in the demonstration of the spirit and of power in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, let everyone that minister, let him do it with the ability which God supplies. Let's ask that God will supply divine ability for them to minister according to his heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Divine abilities, divine abilities in the name of Jesus, which only him can supply. There will be a flow of the, of the gift of the spirit in the name of Jesus, there will be a flow of the gift of the Spirit. And finally, let us pray that God's name will be glorified in the name of Jesus. In every life, God's grace with God's glory will be, God's name will be glorified. God's name will be glorified. In the precious name of Jesus, God's name will be glorified. No one coming into that conference, no matter the medium they are joining us from, no one will encounter the conference and remain the same in the mighty name of Jesus. No matter the medium, everyone that connects one way or the other, whatever 
explanation they are connecting from, uh, there will be a definite impact. There will be a personal encounter for everyone in the precious name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you. We give you all the praise in the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You want to pray for yourself and you want to say, Lord God, uh, I open up myself to receive from you today in the name of Jesus. Uh, I open up to receive from you today. I open up to receive from you today. The Bible says it will look to the perfect law of liberty and continues in it uh, and it's not a forgetful hearer but the doer of the work this one will be blessed in what he does i read james chapter 1 and verse 25 you want to say lord i open up my heart to receive your word and to do the word in the name of jesus i will not just be a hearer but i will be a doer a doer of the work and i position myself to be blessed because i'm a doer of the work that the world implies father will say thank you we give you the praise in jesus precious name somebody out there shout it loud amen hallelujah i want to welcome you once again to service this this moment uh wherever you are joining from this is elevation church if this is your first time let us know that you are joining us for the first time and just get to the comment section of whatever platform you are joining us from and of course our officials will be there to warmly welcome you thank you so much for joining we pray that god's blessings and god's grace rest about and abide with you wherever you are joining from in jesus name enjoy the rest of the service and god bless you the Accelerate Worship Conference is just around the corner and it's happening live, online and in person. If you would like to attend online, it is important that you please register now at elevationng.org forward slash accelerate. Register your crew and invited guests too, but make sure you get their consent first. Registration for physical attendance will start on Monday 28th, June 2021. The Waymaker has made a way for us. See you at Accelerate. I was a victim of online fraud where I lost huge sums. I bought some currency but while I was transferring to my storage wallet, somehow the transaction did not come through. In the process of reaching the customer service of the trading platform for support, I fell into the hands of people who were acting as their support agent. I made a mistake by giving them sensitive information that I should not have given them and they cleared all the funds in my wallet. The week before this happened, I remembered PG said, the enemy will try you but keep your peace. The Lord will come through for you and I held on to that. After four to five weeks, the equivalent amount that was withdrawn from my investment wallet was transferred to my bank account, which I normally use to credit the trading platform. And I received it with profit at the current exchange rates. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dreamt. Praise the Lord. with me today and bless the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your presence in every life, in every home, whatever people are joining this service, in all of our in-person gatherings. Uh, we thank you. We thank you for everyone partaker of this service. Will you bless the Lord today for the grace to be a part of this, this, this wonderful service. Will you just go ahead and bless him. Lift your hands and bless the name of Jesus. Lift your hands and bless the name of Jesus. Focus on him right now. Take distractions away from you. Whether you're in in-person gathering or you're online, uh, Jesus is with you right where you are. And the presence of the Spirit of God is with you right where you are. Father, we set this time apart for the move of your Spirit. We give you permission to invade every gathering, every home, every place, wherever people are joining this service right now. Let your presence invade your heart. Let your glory be seen in every life. Charge your word with power today. Let it minister grace to every hearer. Let no one be the same again. This is all about you. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. We give you permission to fill somebody with your spirit today. To heal somebody. To deliver somebody. 
to turn somebody loose for the fulfillment of destiny. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, because your gift will be in manifestation, not only through this service, but in the life of everyone that will partake of this service. We'll bless you and we'll give you all the glory and all the praise in the name of the Lord Jesus. And all who believe, shout it, believe in, amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. So good uh, to be able to bring you God's word today, whether you're in any of our in-person gatherings all over the city of Lagos, on the, in Lekki, in Greater Lekki, in the Korodu, in Maryland, uh, Life Point Church, wherever you are being a part of this service, I want to welcome you very, very specially. Now, this is an appointed moment, so I want you to give me your listening attention and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you through the preaching and teaching of God's Word today. Amen. It's the last teaching series in, uh, uh, it's the last teaching in the series that we've tagged uh, Everyday Supernatural. And if you've not been a part of this series, I want to invite you, go ahead and binge watch, binge listen, whatever platform you use, whether it's YouTube, online chat platform, whatever platform suits you, I want you to go there and just catch up very quickly. As we wrap up today, this remains a word for the season. So you don't want to wrap it up and just put it somewhere. You want to refocus really on it, uh, you know, get on the God's word, every, all the ones that are preach, the ones that uh, the campus pastors have preached, uh, the one that my wife preached last week, whatever, uh, you know, platform you've been joining us, I wanted to go back there and listen again, watch again and again, because this season, God wants to manifest the supernatural through your own life. He wants you to be an agent of the supernatural. If you have not been taking the confessions with us, I want it, we're going to do it again after this word. I want you to take it, get on that website, download it, and Make it your daily confession, daily confession, because this time, this time requires the supernatural. Yeah, it requires the supernatural. If there's a time for you to imbibe the nature, the supernatural nature of God, this is the time. This is the season. When we live in a season of uncertainties, we need not only to be agile mentally, we need to be agile spiritually. And to be agile spiritually is to be able, uh, you know, to release the nature of God in you, through supernatural living and supernatural acts of divine intervention in every area of life. And that will be your own testimony this season in the name of Jesus. Say amen, somebody. All right, let's get into the word of God today. Uh, you all know that we're preparing for the Accelerate uh, Worship Conference. It's a few days from now, and I wanted to get ready. It's going to be a time that God will unleash the supernatural upon us when we worship him. He moves in the midst of us. And that's what I wanted to look forward to. I wanted to look forward to it as we pray, as we worship. Uh, uh, if you participated in the 72 hours uh, uh, prayer chain, good for you. Or uh, if you didn't fast with us last week, you can still do your own this week. And then get ready for the Accelerate Worship Conference. It promises to be powerful. I'll say one or two more things about it after the word. Uh, so let's get into the word of God today. I've titled this last teaching in this series, your word needs you. Can you say after me? Say, my word needs me. Say one more time. Say, my word needs me. And if you have anyone sitting beside you, anyone, you know, joining you in the service, and if you're an in-person gathering, say, uh, say to your neighbor, say, your word needs you. Yes, 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 yes. Our word needs us like never before this season. I'm going to be reading from Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, a bit of a long reading from verse 14 and 15, which were flogged a bit through this season. I'm going to read through to verse 22. Romans 8 from verse 14 down to verse 22 uh, from the New King James Version. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, uh, these are the sons of God. Verse 15 says, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom you cry, Abba, Father. Uh, we've, we've said that the spirit that we have right now manifesting through us is the spirit of adoption. We're calling God Daddy. Uh, and we need to know the details of the adoption and live out our new nature. But let's go ahead with the reading, verse 16. It says, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs. And if uh, and heirs of God and joint heirs with, with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Uh, verse 18 says, For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy 
to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us, in all of us. And this is the glory we need to live through this season. Verse 20 says, for the creation was subject to futility. Sorry, verse 19. I need to read verse 19 first. It says, for the earnest expectation, the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. That's why I said your world needs you. It says, verse 19 again, uh, verse 19 again, it says, for the endless expectation, the endless expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Verse 20 says, for the creation was subject to futility, not willing, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Verse 21 says, Be because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Look at verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with bad pangs together until now. But verse 19, which is very critical to the sharing of today, says the earnest of the creation is waiting for the manifestation, the revealing of the sons of God. And what is the earnest of the creation waiting for? The unleashing or the revealing of you and I. Uh, God wants to reveal me to my word. He wants to reveal you to your word. Yeah. That's why I'm saying that you are needed in our world today. You are wanted in our world today. Yeah. You are wanted. You are needed. God needs you to fulfill his purpose. If there's any reason why God wants to unleash the supernatural through you and I, why he wants to move through me and move through you is because he needs his agents right now. Can somebody say after me, say I'm an agent of God in this world uh, that, that is in crisis. Say it again, say I'm an agent of God in this world that is in crisis. And when there's crisis upon our world, God creates op opportunities for his sons and daughters to be revealed. So God sends us uh, to the world with with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The supernatural was meant to make way to those, uh, you know, uh, to, 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 to those of us who wants to proclaim the gospel of Christ. And that's why we can't live without it. We can't live without it. We can't live without demonstrating it practically in our lives and demonstrating it as occasion demands through different situations and circumstances. So somebody, uh, you may live in a neighborhood where something untowards is happening, where there's demonic oppression. This is a time for the revealing, for your revealing. Your word needs you because through you, that demonic oppression will be a thing of the past. Can I say, say hey, better amen to that. Glory be to Jesus. So the world uh, needs us at this time like never before. We have the solution the world needs. We have the solution the world needs, and we cannot keep silent. We cannot keep silent. It has to show through you and I. Signs and wonders are supposed to follow me and follow you. Yeah. As I go, it's supposed to follow me. Signs and wonders, uh, you know, do not follow stationary Christians. It follows Christians who are going somewhere, who are moving in a certain direction, who are touching something, uh, who are aware that the endness of the creature are waiting for the revealing or on the, the unveiling of children of God. So every true believer in Christ Jesus is ad coded for the expansion of the kingdom of God and as, uh, you know, the, has been empowered by the Holy Spirit to be able to do that. Yeah. Every true believer in Christ Jesus is ad coded for the expansion of the kingdom of God. Uh, you know, as empowered by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to empower you and I for the preaching of the gospel, for the expansion of the kingdom of God, and for solving problems. And that will happen when we become aware of our real nature, which is the supernatural nature. You know, Jesus said, by their fruit, you shall know them. You need to bear fruit of the Spirit. But not just fruit of the Spirit, uh, to, to make people know that character-wise you are okay, but also the offshoot of the indwelling presence, which is, you know, uh, divine interventions that God wants to bring through you and I. So, the big question this morning is, what problem are you solving? What problem are you solving? What problem are you solving? 
many people <laughs> want to, to solve their own problems, but they don't want to solve problems for anybody. Forgetting that what we have been teaching about, the fact that God wants us to be everyday supernatural, is not just going to be only about us. Not at all. Not at all. The Apostle Paul was writing in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12 and from verse 1, he said, he said, concerning spiritual gift, or one translation says the spirituals, or spiritual enablement. Yeah, give me New Living Translation. New Living Translation, 1 Corinthians 12 and, and verse 1. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 1, New Living Translation. He said, now dear brothers and sisters, regarding your question about special abilities the Spirit gives us, I don't want you to uh, misunderstand this. I don't, one translation says, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning the spiritual abilities that the Spirit gives us. Concerning the spiritual abilities that the Spirit gives us, he said, I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to misunderstand this. Many people are misunderstanding, you know, the spiritual ability that the Holy Spirit gives us, thinking that we are only supposed to use it to solve our own health problems, our financial challenges, and, you know, and all, all, all whatnot. But it's more than that. My word needs me, and your word needs you. And the, what we saw in the life of Christ and the apostles is that they went into the war. In fact, Jesus commanded us in the Great Commission that we should go into the world. Mark 16, when you read from verse 15, the Bible says, and he said to them, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who, uh, who, who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs, somebody say these signs. <laughs> say it again, say these signs. Yes, these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, scripture says here, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Do you see everything spoken about here? Jesus sent his disciples into the world and by implication you and I into our world because he knows that our world needs us. Because everything that he said they would do with the power that has given them, with the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, will be solutions to their world. Yeah. So these signs shall follow them who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons and many oppressed people, possessed people, ob obsessed people in our world today. They will speak with new, with, with, with new tongues because we need to speak the language of people and the language of heaven. Speaking with new tongues there means that sometimes it's not only speaking in tongues. It's like you need to speak the language of people as empowered by the Holy Spirit. And then you speak the language of heaven because you need to keep communicating with God. Say amen, somebody. Say amen, somebody. Praise God. Praise God. Say they will take up serpents. And that is figurative. There are many strange spirits. Many things that hurt people in our world today. We are supposed to be able to, you know, just remove them, take them off. You know, get things off people's lives and he said, if, if by any chance you have to drink any deadly thing, he said, it will not hurt you. Yeah, it will not hurt you. He uh, said, it's by no, it shall by no means hurt you and you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Mark 16, verse 20 there also. He said, they went out and preached everywhere. Somebody say everywhere. That includes your neighborhood. That includes your office. That includes you in the bus, in the train. That includes you. In that clubhouse, that includes you everywhere. Everywhere. He said they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the world through their company signs. Ladies and gentlemen, the world needs you. Your world needs you. Because there are certain signs that only believers can demonstrate. There are certain things that can only come by the help of the Holy Spirit. I love uh, you know, the philanthropic efforts of our church, the Elevation Church, for instance, and I love many donor agencies, foundations, NGOs, and governmental efforts at helping our world to be stable, at reaching people's, you know, uh, different people in the different areas of their need. But can I tell you something? Can I tell you something, especially this post-COVID era, uh, you know, so whether it's a pandemic itself where people need to get, you know, uh, whatever will make them stable emotionally, physically, and all that, 
The, our world has been rattled. Uh, we need the power of God more than ever before this season. It will be good for us to do all the other things, the, all the things that the physical things can do, skill can do, money can do, but that people have challenges that only the Holy Spirit can handle. There are certain challenges in people's lives that money cannot solve the problem. Yeah. Money cannot solve the problem. It will be good for us to be that compassionate. I'm going to get in there very soon. But there are many things that it takes the power of the Holy Ghost to destroy and to remove. And that's why our world needs us like never before at this time. First Corinthians 12, when you read from verse 7, the Bible talks about the gifts of the Spirit. And that's what is supposed to be manifesting through you and I. The Spirit is looking for people to manifest true. And you are an agent, a candidate for such manifestation. Say amen, somebody. Yeah, you are an agent. You are a candidate for such manifestations. In, in 1 Corinthians 12, when you read from verse 7, it's a, uh, a New Living Translation. It says, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. If I stop there, it's enough, but I'm not going to stop there. He said, the spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. We live in a time and an age where, uh, especially coming out of the pandemic, many of us have become so focused on ourselves. So focused on ourselves. We want our own issues resolved, our own problems solved. You know, crisis has a way of making of us self-focused. We are highly susceptible to just being Focus on herself, being selfish, if I can just use that word right now. But what God really wants is for us to look beyond ourselves and look at our world. A world that is in crisis, a world that is full of needs and needy people, a world that is full of people in pain, people impoverished, people bound. All kinds of things happening in our world, if people in crisis, people who lack peace. The Bible says here in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 7, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice so that people can come out of confusion. To another, the Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another to someone else, the one spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles. And another, the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the spirit of God or from another spirit. Still, another person is given the ability to speak in unknown language. While another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. I love that. Verse 11 there of First Corinthians chapter 12. He alone, the Holy Spirit, he alone decides which gift each person should have. That's why each and every one of us must appreciate the gift that the Holy Spirit has given us. Dig within, discover the gift of the Spirit as a manifestation in our life that people who have been dreaming and God speaks to you through your dream and he wants to use you to be a blessing to other people. But rather than being, being I mean, you know these things happen, rather than preparing yourself for it, maybe eat lightly at night, say a prayer before you go to bed, you, you know, you, you walk up, eat up, go to bed and just, Dream anyhow. Dream that cannot be interpreted. Yet, God wants to use you. <laughs> I know I know that sounds funny and somebody may be laughing, but what I have in mind is not to make you laugh. It is to emphasize the need for each and every one of us to position ourselves to be used of God this time. Can you hear me tell somebody beside you again, say, your word needs you. Yeah, your word needs you. Your word needs you. My word needs me. My word needs me and my, your, your word needs you. And it's beyond, like I said, it's beyond just being, uh, uh, being benevolent or being, uh, uh, you, you know, doing uh, philanthropy. That, that is good. It is. What, what, but we're talking about the dimension of help in the areas of the spirituals, in the areas where only believers, people who have access to positive supernatural, who have access 
uh, to, to the gift of the Spirit, have access to the power of God, can intervene. You and I are the only ones that can intervene in those areas at this time. Now, there are three big thoughts, big thoughts about supernatural mission that I want uh, to, to, to release to us and then we're going to pray together. We're going to pray and trust God to unleash his power upon us. Everything you've heard all through this season, I want you to know God wants you to live everyday supernatural. And as you do that, you're going to see the effect of it in your life. But much more than that is that God is putting you on a mission to your world to demonstrate the power of God, to help people, to release uh, people who are bound, to, 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 to heal the sick, to preach the gospel so that people will know that the power of God is in manifestation in your life. Say amen if you believe that. Praise God. Big thoughts about our supernatural mission and how God wants to use us. One is that each and every one of us, we need to develop unusual compassion. If you want to see the power of God manifest through your life, you have to trust him to develop unusual compassion in you this season. The Bible says, is the one that's at work within us to will and to do of his good pleasure. But I need to trust God to help me develop unusual compassion. And I need to ask myself the question, what moves my heart? That's the question I'm asking you today. What moves your heart? Yeah. What moves your heart? Are you fast becoming a self-lover? You know, all around the world, we've we, we suffered a lot of lockdown, shutdown, and you see, when you see yourselves and your family members for three straight months, only you, sometimes you start to feel like maybe there's nothing to this world beyond this, your nuclear family. Can I tell you the truth? There's more to this world beyond your nuclear family or yourself. Some people have even been shopping alone, just on their own, or maybe with just a friend or with a spouse or, you know, with a partner, whatever. I need you to understand one thing. The fact that you've been working from home, doing most of things from home, does not mean that your world revolves only around you and around those people that you're seeing. Some of us have not been able to travel in a while. It's sometimes you forget that, the, 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 that there are many, <laughs> many continents in our world and people exist in all those different continents and different countries and they have needs. And a lot of the time, God is only looking for one person. And it doesn't matter where you are. He can use you, uh, uh, you know, in any part of the world. Yeah, he can use you, but it starts from where you are. Jesus said, tarry here in Jerusalem, where you are, until you are endued with power from on high. And then you shall, you shall be my witnesses. From Jerusalem to Judea, which is not so far away, to Samaria, uh, which maybe speaks a uh, slightly different language, but they are not also so far away. And then to the uttermost part of the earth, to, to different places. And that's how God wants to use us. Starting from your neighborhood, from your school, from your family, from your office, from your industry. And then all through. But the starting point is for you and I to develop unusual compassion. Unusual compassion. Do you have compassion for people who are unsaved, for instance? When was the last time you preached the gospel to an unsaved person? That you actually open your mouth to tell somebody, Jesus loves you. He wants to save your soul. Or that you share a testimony with somebody. The power of God will not just manifest in your life anyhow. Because somebody is saying, yeah, I've been praying. They said we should study the word. I've studied the word. And you know where there's no wood, the fire goes out. But I don't see any fire. Because uh, what are you doing <laughs> with, with what you have right now? That's the big question. Do you have compassion? Is compassion developing in your heart? God will not just unleash his gift upon you just for you to carry gift like Christmas tree. We decorate Christmas tree, but it's just for, for, for good sight and decoration. It doesn't bless anybody. Rather than being a Christmas tree, God wants you to be a mango tree or an orange tree, a tree that people can get something to refresh, to relieve themselves from. Yeah, not just a Christmas tree. Nobody eats anything from the Christmas tree. Yeah, nobody gets anything to eat from there. You have all kinds of things dangling from there, and that's how some people's life, uh, that's how their lives are. Just, you know, I'm a Christian, I have all these gifts, but nobody can benefit from it because there's no compassion. Compassion, ladies and gentlemen, is what unleashes that which you carry for your world. Do you have compassion? For people who are hurting, 
who are oppressed, who are suffering? Do you have compassion for the unsaved? Or are you unmoved by their plight? Where are you creating value in our world today? All these are very, very important. Very, very important. Yeah, not all angels come from heaven. Sometimes God commissioned men to do the things uh, that people are expecting angels to do. And the angels that some people will see in all their lifetime, the only angel they will encounter may just be you. May just be you. You know, in the Bible days, angels brought messages from God to people. Remember Joseph, the foster father of our Lord Jesus Christ. An angel had to come and say, look, don't forsake Mary because of what has gone on, you know, and all that. And he created absolute clarity for him to be able to move on, fulfill his purpose as a foster father of the Messiah. That many people in confusion today, it's you, true, the gift of word of knowledge, true, the gift of prophecy, true, the gift of, uh, 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 you know, uh, special wisdom, that word of wisdom that God is going to use you to deal with the confusion in their lives and help them to set their priorities straight and be focused. You may be the only angel that they will encounter all through their lives. But do you have compassion for the confused, for the confounded, for the discouraged, for the hopeless? That's what we're talking about today. Because if you don't have compassion for anybody hopeless around you, then God may not give you that gift of word of wisdom or word of knowledge that can help them to create a pathway for the fulfillment of their destiny. I pray this season that unusual compassion will be battered in your heart in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Somebody say better amen to that. Glory be to Jesus. Uh, a church without compassion will never desire to walk in the supernatural. I tell you the truth. A church, a people without compassion will have no need desiring to walk in the supernatural. Yeah. But if you have compassion in your heart, you definitely will desire to walk in the supernatural. Matthew 9, verse 36, 37 and 38. The Bible says in verse 36 of Matthew 9, New King James Version, it says, But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. They had no direction. They had no source. Or, you know, or, or no, no, no resource available to them. That's what it means to be like sheep without shepherd. No direction, no resource. Jesus looked at people. Matthew 9 here, verse 36, when he, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep without shepherd. They lack direction, they lack resources because those are the two things that the shepherd provides for the sheep. Direction, resources, protection. They lack all those. He said they were like sheep without shepherd. Then he said to the disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Will you be a laborer in God's harvest this season? By trusting him to put compassion in your heart for the lost, for the sick, for the discouraged, for the, you know, uh, for, for, for the visually impaired, for anyone suffering any kind of disability or, that, or, or special abilities as the case may be or different ability than what we are all used to. And we need help. Do you have compassion for people with special needs at this time? That's what we're talking about. And, you know, I want to encourage and every one of us to have what I call like a compassion, a wheel of compassion. Just a wheel of compassion. Uh, where from time to time you can, you can look through. Yeah. You see what I'm talking about? The wheel of compassion. You know, uh, uh, where you, you can look through and say, okay, right now it's about the sick and people who are in pain. That's the people God is using me for. Or is the poor, or is the lonely, or uh, uh, the lonely and afraid. And God is using me for them. Yeah. The locked up, incarcerated, imprisoned, God is using me for them. Confused and hopeless, God is using me for them. Lost and unsaved, God is using me for them. There's a wheel of compassion that God wants you to have in your heart, have around you, where from time to time, something is connecting with a gift in your heart based on the compassion that you have for this people group or for this area of life, and God is able to use you to touch lives in that manner. In Matthew 14, verse 14, the Bible says, And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, 
and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. Compassion, ladies and gentlemen, is what brings out the special gift that God has put in your heart. What are you compassionate about? Who are you compassionate towards? Yeah. Who is drawing out compassion? When you see a marriage going south, being destroyed, does it touch anything in your heart? That's how you know whether there's a special grace upon your life to help people resolve their marital issues. When you see a believer that does not know his right from his left, who is fumbling and wumbling through life, lacking uh, maturity, are you, uh, is there compassion in your heart to step in and disciple such a person? And by that, you just see that there's a shepherding gift that God wants to release through you. There's a gift to help people mature that God wants to release through you. Very important. Very, very important. First John 3 and verse 17 and 18. First John 3 verse 17 and 18 in King James Version. It says, but whoso at this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shut it up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him. You know, I brought in King James Version because there's something I was looking for. A bowel of compassion, it, it was called in King James Version. It says, uh, if you shut your bowel of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in you? That's a great question. You cannot prove that you have the love of God in you if you don't have a bowel of compassion or it is shut up completely. That's why we need to trust God if you want to walk in the supernatural to unleash unusual compassion this season. Secondly, engage in fervent and constant intercession. Can I say this? There's a connection between the first thought and this second thought. There's no way my bowel of compassion will open up that I will not find something in me dragging me to the place of prayer for somebody who is in need. The least, just like Peter said, in Acts of the Apostle, there at the gate beautiful, when they met a man who was impotent in his feet, he said, silver and gold I have not, but what I have, I give to you. The man sitting at the beautiful gate, in Acts of the Apostle, there, he said, what I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus, of Nazareth, rise up and walk. There's something that you have. There's something that you have, and it's a boil of compassion that opens it up. And if you don't have any material things, you have time that's been given to us to intercede for other people. Has been given to us to intercede for other people. So much prophecy is revealed in the place of prayer. In the place of prayer, a lot happens. We pray until deliverance happens. Who have you taken time to pray for until their deliverance happens? Yeah. Who, 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 who are you spending? Who are you praying for? Who has experienced delay, for instance, in, in bearing the fruit of the womb? Yeah. I remember a time in our lives where my wife and I were, were constantly had just a, a few couples were praying, praying, praying for. And I remember my wife used to pray. Aaron's rod were born. You know, miracles will happen. And this couple, they, they will carry their baby. And when one, two of them started carrying their baby, I remember all those times in prayers. And up to, up to now, I see our people that I pray for. Who are you praying for? That something will break loose in their lives. Engaging in fervent and consistent, constant intercession is needed at this time. God is depending on your prayer for the enrichment of the kingdom in certain locations. Yeah. The entrenchment of the kingdom, sorry. Entrenchment of the kingdom in certain locations, certain places in the world. God wants you and I to pray. Somebody must have compassion for Great Britain. Somebody must have compassion for North America. Somebody must have compassion for China. Somebody must have compassion for Nigeria. At this time, you may not have anything, but let constant and fervent intercession go on through you. John 11, verse 41 and 42. The Bible says, Then it took, then it took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of these people who are standing by, I say this, that they may believe that you sent me. Who is God sending you to? Jesus prayed at the tomb of Lazarus. Then he called Lazarus forth and Lazarus came forth. There was nothing else that could have 
brought Lazarus out of the dead. If not for Jesus at that time, pray. In the same vein, there are issues in people's lives right now that God is looking for somebody who will pray for them. Whether from a distance or from where they are, and something will be set loose in their lives. Yeah, something will be set loose in their life. In Acts 27, when you read from verse 23, the Bible says, For there stood, uh, said, there stood by me this night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, man, for I believe, God, that it will be just as it was told me. This was, uh, the, 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 this, this was Paul here speaking uh, in that voyage to Rome. How he prayed and then God gave him a word. And that word covered everyone on that voyage. Said nobody will die here just because of you and because you are praying to God. Is there a word that God is giving you this season? That that industry will not collapse? That family will not collapse just because you are praying? That's what happens when we pray in the power of prayer. The, the, the last thought today is share and preach the gospel with joy and urgency. Yeah. It's time for us to share and preach the gospel with joy and urgency. Uh, don't, 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 don't lose me at all. I talked about compassion. I talked about intercession. And this one is about preaching the gospel. If you want the power of God to flow through your life, you must develop unusual compassion. You must be a person of prayer, especially praying for other people. That's what intercession means, standing in the gap for other people. Not supplication or petitioning God for yourself and for your need. Remember Job, when he prayed for his, his friends, his own misfortune was turned around. Some people don't even know that it's not about how long you pray for yourself. Sometimes God wants you to get into intercession, then it turns things around in your own life when you, you stand in God for other people. But don't forget also, the last day today, it's time to share and preach the gospel with joy and with a sense of urgency. The signs and wonders are meant to lead people to God, not to lead people to me or to you, but to lead them to God. So when we preach the gospel, we get more signs and wonders because we're leading people to God. We're leading people to God. The gospel is the core business of, of the church and of believers. So when God puts you in a position, you're transacting good business, you run a business, uh, you have a great career, you are there for the sake of the gospel. As you preach the gospel there, the power of God, divine intelligence, wisdom, and grace is manifested through you much more. So boldness to declare the gospel always comes from encounters with the Holy Spirit. Encounters with the Holy Spirit. As you pray, you get bolder. You declare more. God releases more. You see his power move through people's life. You slow down to pray for somebody, to get involved with something that's happening in your office, in your neighborhood. Uh, you know, pray for a couple that's having it rough. Pray for a child that is perpetually sick or in need. And then before you know it, you see the power of God manifesting through you more and more. As you do that, you preach the gospel. You lead people to Christ. You speak about the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul writing in Romans 1 and 16, he says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jews first and then the Gentiles. Who are you preaching to? All your friends at work that you laugh or you know, joke with all the time, do you have compassion for them that they may not be going to the same place you're going if Jesus should come today? And it's time for you to pray to them. Because when we preach, we see God manifest himself like never before. Acts 4 and 33. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It means simply that they preached the gospel with boldness. And said, and great grace was upon them all. You want to see great grace in your life? Preach the gospel with great power. Preach the gospel with consistency. Preach it unashamedly. Preach it whenever God gives you opportunity. Use your platform to preach it. Preach it on social media. Yeah. Preach it everywhere. You know, almost every month now we have a uh, uh, global uh, uh, cyber evangelism or cyber mission week. And some people have never participated. You, you enjoy being on Instagram complaining and, and commenting on different issues. The Facebook, you can argue from now to tomorrow on politics and all that. But you've never said Jesus is Lord and somebody here needs Jesus and giving your own testimony. Uh, the power is meant for that. 
when you do that, whether online, offline, you see the power and the presence of God in your life like never before. Jesus did not die only so that you can be wealthy or okay or have a good job. He died so that souls may be saved. And in his death and resurrection, we saw the manifestation of the power of God, which is exemplary for how God wants to manifest himself in our world today. When I participate and you participate in that preaching, that power, that resurrection power is released like never before. And that power is finding fulfillment in your life this season in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody lift your two hands with me today and bless the name of Jesus. And will you say, lift your voice and say, Father, fill me afresh with your spirit today. Fill me afresh. Fill me afresh with your spirit. Fill me afresh with your power. I want to see your power manifest through my life. I want to be an agent for the supernatural. I want to carry grace that is perceivable. I want to be the eyes to the blind. I want to be used to lift someone out of poverty and out of sickness. Lord, give me a heart of compassion. Let that be the prayer of your heart today. Whenever you are hearing the sound of my voice, lift your voice right now. If there's any breath in you, I want you to, to use it right now to speak to God. Say, Father, pour out your grace upon me. Pour out your power upon me. Give me the grace to have compassion on people, to stand in the God, to pray for other people. Even as we go into this Accelerate Week, Lord, give me grace as I worship, as I pray, to remember somebody who is hurting, to remember somebody who needs a miracle. Let me not make it about myself. Whether in the time of praise, in place of worship, or in place of prayer, Lord, lead me to be light to the dark. The darkness in other people's life. Somebody pray today. Pray today. Pray today. Somebody pray and say, Lord, make me a Christian full of compassion. Make me a compassionate Christian that is passionate about intercession. That is busy preaching the gospel. Glory be to Jesus. Pray and lift your two hands with me. Say, Father, make me a Christian that is passionate about prayer. That is compassionate towards people. And that is busy preaching the gospel. Let my problem, my personal issues not overwhelm me. Let them not make me a drifter that will drift away from your perfect will for my life. I want to be used of you. I want to be used by you. I, I, I want to be an agent in this kingdom army. Will you pray today? And as you pray, I want you to release yourself and say, Father, fill me with your power. Fill me with your power. Somebody is praying right now. Lord, fill me with boldness. I want to be able to preach. I've been timid. I've been ashamed. I want to be able to say like Apostle Paul in Romans 1 and verse 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Make that the prayer of your heart today. Make that the prayer of your heart today. Somebody, you need to speak to your spouse. It's time to confront in love by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, And this is the time to receive that power. Somebody, you need to speak to your boss. God wants you to use use you uh, to bring a change into your boss's life. To heal, to set free, to deliver. And you have been timid. This is the time to receive the grace and the power for that. Somebody, you're thinking, if I say the truth in this situation, my friends will walk away from me. Will you receive grace today? Receive the boldness to speak the word of God. You will never be ashamed again of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lift your two hands to Jesus and receive the power of God upon your life today. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you will never be the same again. Pray in the spirit. Pray in understanding. Trust God today to fill you afresh with his power. With, with, with boldness and with grace. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost song. Pray in the Holy Ghost song. Raprodo kushetia bra angra le kisha tayaba. Re pranda kala brodo kushetia. Mere de bosa pankra dige le bosh. Ikente kra angra like shotayaba. Ragoso soto pre engra like shite yende. Pray in the Holy Ghost. If you are not baptized in the Spirit, there is a time to trust God to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. Lift your two hands and say, Father, feel me. Feel me, whatever platform you're joining this service from, whether in online church, online, you know, gatherings, in-person gatherings, the Spirit of God is where you are. And declare it right now. The power of God is all, all, all over you where you are. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Feel me afresh, Father. Feel me afresh, Father. Give me the boldness to release my platform, to release my heart, 
to release my mind, my intellect, my social media platform, whatever platform you are giving me, my network, my, my, my friendship, I release everything to you. Use me within these platforms. Use me within my network to be the light in the midst of darkness. And let your power follow me. Let it manifest in my business. Let it manifest in my academics. Let it manifest in my family that I may have something to share uh, with people who are unsaved and hopeless. I am the hope of this world. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and we give you praise. We bless your name, our Father. We thank you, our Father. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus. I yield to uh, the resident pastors to take charge in in in-person gatherings. For everyone, join to this service today. We're going to uh, start to close and I'm going to lead us in confession of the word of God, which we have done all through this teaching series. Like I said before, you need to stay with this confession. Make sure you have your own copy. And after now, post-accelerate conference, I want you to also uh, uh, be able to confess the word of God on your own. And as you confess also, please remember, as we get into the Accelerate Conference season, I want I needed to understand this, that you need to have a seed in your hand. This seed is not by compulsion. It is as you are led by the Spirit. But as we cross into the second half of the year, I needed to understand this, that God wants a seed of gratitude, a seed of praise, a seed that has in it your expectation for the future, the second half of this year. And as you give your accelerated seed this season, something will break loose in your life. If you haven't been a part of the Elevation Church before now, you may not know about the accelerated seed, but I needed to know every mid-year as you go into the accelerate conference, whether it's a prayer conference, a teaching conference, a worship conference, we sow seeds that, that connect, reconnect our expectation back to God as we move into the second half of the year. I need you to participate and then water your seed with these confessions. You will see the end of God in your life like never before. So I want you to go through this confession with me. Uh, and if you're an in-person gathering, the pastors will take you through this confession. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I want to say after me, say, I am a spirit, born of the spirit, and I possess the nature of God. The spirit of God dwells in me, influences me, empowers me, guides me, conditions me, and expresses God's capabilities through me. Say, I live beyond my five senses and outside of the realm of human knowledge because I'm supernatural and I live every day supernatural. My life is governed, directed, and influenced by the divine nature and supernatural capabilities. I sense the invisible, I hear the inaudible, and dare the impossible, all according to my supernatural nature. My supernatural nature manifests in big things, ordinary things, and every area of my life. Because I'm supernatural, and I live every day supernatural. Say divine wisdom, power, peace, patience, love, and joy are parts of my divine, of my divinity. And I manifest them daily. I am not limited in expression, growth, and manifestation by economic conditions, medical science, political systems, and financial systems. Because I'm supernatural, and I live every day supernatural. And lastly, say after me, say I'm resilient, creative, perceptive, full of power, and strong in character in a way that ordinary humans cannot fathom. When people encounter me, interact with me, with my work, and try to analyze my life, they perceive divinity because I'm supernatural and I live every day supernatural. All who believe say, believe in amen. Glory be to Jesus. Put your hands together, celebrate Jesus. Wherever you are, celebrate Jesus. Bless his name, bless his name, bless his name. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Before we bring the service to an end today, I love to pray for anyone who may be saying, Pastor, I don't know Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. I want to pray for you. 
I want to pray for you. Somebody who may be saying, oh, I gave my life to Christ before, but I bustled into sin. And now that I know that my world needs me and God wants to use me, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. Can I also pray for you right now? Right now, right now, right now. Can I ask that you put your hands on your heart, wherever you may be, and I want you to say after me, if you're on any of our platforms, I want you to go to that platform and just right there. I just gave my, I want to give my life to Christ. Or I just gave my life to Christ right now. But say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I need a savior. So I ask that you forgive me my sins and that you cleanse me from every unrighteousness. I receive you today as my Lord and my personal savior. I dedicate my life to you afresh. Be my Lord. Be my savior. Fill my heart with your spirit and give me a new beginning with you. I declare that I'm now born again. I'm a child of God. And I will serve you the remaining days of my life. In Jesus' precious name, amen. If you believe that, say, believe in amen. For everyone, every bold person who just made a decision for Jesus, I want you to go to the platform, the chat room, the comments uh, section, and I want you to write it there. I just gave my life to Christ, or I just dedicated my life to Christ. We we'll love uh, to send you some link get to know you a bit better, and send you some materials that will help you to grow in your faith in Christ Jesus. Welcome to the family of God again and again, and God bless you. I want to encourage you to be strong in your faith and uh, keep joining us online. And if you live in the city of Lagos, join us, you know, or any other city where Elevation Church has an expression, please join us there. And if, if not, look for a good church around you where you can worship. If you want to go to in-person gathering, if you're online, please always join us online. And uh, God will continue to bless you in Jesus' name. I'd love to invite you to be a part of our online church community. Uh, go to online.elevationenergy.org. You will see the link there. I mean, you'll see, you'll, you'll, you'll see the site. You can be a part of it. We have our ministers, pastors who will be a blessing to you. And you have small groups that you can join online uh, to be a part of groups of people who will encourage you to do life with them and grow in your faith. Uh, please make sure that you join any of these. Go to small group or connect group dot elevation ng dot or online uh, online church dot elevation ng dot You get more information about the two things that I've mentioned already. Now I, I I want to welcome everyone worshiping with us for the first time. So first time at the Elevation Church, I want to I want you to also go into the those, that chat room and let us know it's my first time. Just say it's my first time. It's my first time. We'd love to reach out to you, send you a link, send you an electronic gift or downloadable gift. I mean that you can download and it will be a blessing to you. Just let us know it's my first time and our hosts and hostesses and ministers will connect with you right here online right now uh, uh, as this service is on. All right? Can I lead us as we give to God today? It's a culture for us at the Elevation Church to worship God with our substance. Uh, and there are many ways we give at the Elevation Church that will now be displayed on the screen. So before we bring the service to a close, I love to, to, to just guide us into a time of giving. So you, 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 you can pick any of, of the different ways that has been displayed on the screen for you to give. If you're local to Nigeria, you can use any of those local banks uh, uh, on the screen to give either through uh, the short code platform or wire transfer. And uh, if you're watching from outside of Nigeria, you can use a payment gateway, which is elevationng.org forward slash giving. You can use any of your international cards to give, or you can choose to also uh, do a wire transfer to us. The details are on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, and God will bless you as you give and worship God with your substance today in Jesus' name. Can I pray for everyone giving, honoring God with their substance, uh, giving tight offering, special gift to God today. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your sons and daughters as money leaves their account to your church. Uh, for the furtherance of your gospel today, we ask for the blessing uh, of, of, of a giver, the blessing of obedience to be upon them. We decree that the heavens open over everyone in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that the month of July comes with new blessings, that grace is released, favor is released, new opportunities, open doors in the name of Jesus, and we declare that uh, 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 negative incidences are averted on the behalf of every giver in the name of Jesus and your hand of divine protection, your hand of grace and favor rest upon everyone in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you uh, for worshiping the Lord with your substance today. I believe that the God who sits in secret, he will definitely reward you openly 
with all of your giving. Finally, I want you to know that this week is a special week for us at the Elevation Church. We've announced over and again is the Accelerate Worship Conference week. And uh, it's going to be powerful, powerful. Just three days away uh, by Wednesday, this Wednesday, the 30th, we'll start. And it promises to be a powerful, powerful time. Uh, it will be uh, evening for us, uh, you know, uh, 6.30 p.m. Uh, West African time on Wednesday and Thursday and 7 p.m. on Friday, 7 p.m. West African time on, 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 on Friday and on Sundays, both online and in-person gatherings. We're going to be having lovely worship experiences. Uh, and you, you know all the great people joining us from Nathan Ebasi to Josie Oyekon to Tokyo Alabe to uh, Sisioma to, you know, Debo Adejiro, Lumide Iyun, Lily Perez, Ife Nathan, Polabi Niwa, and uh, my wife and I will be bringing words of encouragement, words of prophecy, and word laced with the power and the grace of God at each of those experiences. It promises to be something that will usher you into a glorious uh, second half of 2021. And I look forward to seeing you, whether online or in any of our in-person gatherings at this event. I want you to be prayerful, prepare your heart uh, to, to have encounters with God. We have all kinds of powerful testimonies that come from Accelerate Conference. And as you come also, don't forget, it's also a time to worship God with your substance. Uh, so bring a special seed, the Accelerate seed, we call it, nothing under compulsion, as you are led in your heart, a special gift of gratitude and thanksgiving to God and a gift that locks in your expectation as you go into the second half of the year because our God will do you well and bring greatness into your life like you have never seen it before in Jesus' precious name. Uh, please hold on for the payoff announcement and have a great week and the Lord bless you. We trust you had a wonderful time in service and believe you were blessed. Please subscribe to and follow us on our various social media channels and be among the first to get updates about our upcoming events. To catch up on other service times or to invite someone to watch online, please note that we have service broadcasts at 7 a.m., 9 a.m., 11 a.m., 4 p.m., 7 p.m. on Sundays and 5 p.m. on Mondays. Please note that all these times are GMT plus one. Simply share the YouTube link with them or visit onlinechurch.elevationng.org. Our online morning prayers Ignite continues tomorrow through Friday at 6 a.m. GMT plus one on Facebook, Zoom, and Mixlr. God is answering prayers, filling us with testimonies, and changing lives daily as we pray. Invite all your family and friends, and don't forget to share your testimonies via testimonies at elevationng.org. Accelerate Worship Conference 2021 is finally here. By now, your family and friends should be prepped to join you this Wednesday, 30th June, to this year's edition themed Waymaker. All our listed powerful ministers are on standby to lead us in intense session of worship. Nathaniel Basi, Tokwe Alabi, Dunsi Oyeko, Olumide Inyu, Efe Nathan, Debo Adediron, Lili Perez, Sisi Oma, Falabi Noel, and the Elevation Priest of Praise. Be reminded that the conference will hold online and in person from Wednesday, 30th June to Sunday, 4th July. For more information and to pre-register, please visit elevationng.org forward slash accelerate. If you would also like to share your Accelerate testimonies, you can either send them to us via testimonies at elevationng.org or record them from the comfort of your home and send us the video. To record, please use a well-lit room and place your phone in a landscape position as shown. You can also share all other testimonies with us and let others be encouraged by what God has done for you. The research store will have Accelerate merchandise on sale during the Accelerate Worship Conference. Kindly stop by at the resource stand to pick up something nice or place an order via the resource website elevationng.org forward slash resources your order will be delivered within three business days. You can also check out inspiring messages from our previous series, beautiful gift items for special occasions, tech branded merchandise, and amazing books by great authors. There are also soul lifting messages on breaking addiction, improving mental health, new believers, 
and many more all available to download for free. The Elevation Church Institute Tech Eye, our growth path to joining the church workforce, invites you to join the train of volunteers who are making greatness common. Classes on Zoom will hold in two batches in July. Batch 1 starts on Saturday, the 3rd of July at 8 a.m., while Batch 2 will start on Saturday, 17th July at 8 a.m. Kindly mark your calendar to register and attend via the link now showing. That is elevationng.org forward slash techi for immediate access to the class on the scheduled date. This will take you three months to complete. Not free on Saturdays or too tired after the week's job to join the class at 8 a.m. or you work weekends. The self-learning option via learning.elevationng.org is available for you to take the classes 100 level to 600 level at your pace within six weeks. This will take you a maximum of six weeks to complete. Remember, you must have completed membership class to engage either option. Navigate 2021, a special program for our teenagers, comes up this July from Monday 19th to Friday 23rd. Navigate is designed to equip teenagers with tools to activate spiritual gifts for fulfilled living and to also guide them on how to cultivate vibrant relationship with God in the face of external pressure. Do remember that the weekly fast for all members of The Elevation Church holds every Wednesday. As you pray for your personal and family needs, please take time to pray for the body of Christ the nation, and her leaders at all levels. Prayer points will be sent via email every Wednesday. Join any of our small groups today by visiting connectgroup.elevationng.org to make vital connections for outstanding stewardship and purpose fulfillment. That's not all. We also have an online community you can grow and thrive with. Simply visit onlinechurch.elevationng.org. We are closer than you think. If you need to reach us, please call 0700 Elevate. That is 0700 353 8283 or send an email to info at elevationng.org. We are also available on WhatsApp and you can send us a message on the number now displayed. Our counseling team is available and waiting to speak with you. Please reach out through any of the numbers on the screen or via email to counseling at elevationng.org. The grace of God for supernatural living and supernatural exploits is available to you in abundance this week. So make sure you leverage grace and have an amazing week. God bless you. God gave me double for my shame. Twins. It's the biggest birthday gift from God. A car and a house. I almost lost both eyes to cancer. It restored my sight. New job with five times my previous pay package. I can't believe I got the visa. God is good. He gave me the contract that I wasn't even qualified for. His grace covered my shortcomings and I received a double promotion. He calmed the storm in my family. He restored my broken marriage. He gave me four fully paid scholarships. He lifted me from the slum to my own house. He multiplied my businesses. Now, I employ. He just changed the entire narrative of my whole life. Praise God. God is faithful. There is nothing God cannot do. It is all God. Glory to Jesus. No doubt, greater is he that is in me, for I am evidently powered by love, by he who daily guides me in the path of righteousness. To grow in faith, to live by the honor code, and gain access to an everyday supernatural life. But there's more. Stay tuned throughout this month as you sharpen your focus and bounce back even after adversity. It is time to press forward with greater faith.